All right, fam, so before we get into this video, man, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications so we can continue to spread the truth all throughout America and these videos can reach the people it needs to reach. So without further ado, man, we got a crazy video for y'all. Let's get it. Let's go. What is happening with regard to controversy after the former president visited Ar Arlington National Cemetery this week? His campaign took photos and video uh, of him in Section 60, where veterans uh, of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan are buried, used it in a campaign video. The Army also says that Trump staffers abruptly pushed aside a cemetery official who tried to enforce Arlington's rules prohibiting political activities. I know you were uh, with Trump at least earlier in that day uh, at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Did you witness the altercation at Section 60? 60? Uh, I was there from the, the beginning with the laying of the wreaths with the family members, the Gold Star family members and, and some of the survivors of that terrorist attack uh, in that disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. I was with them at Section 60 and what I saw was a very grave and somber remembrance and honoring of those lives that were lost. And I saw President Trump spending time at the invitation of these Gold Star families with them. Uh, he was there for a few hours. I did not see or hear about any kind of altercation until something came out in the news uh, later on. The families were there uh, grieving alongside uh, President Trump and, and it was a very special moment to really remember their names, remember their memories, and understand the true cost of war and, and the consequences of the decisions that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden made in the execution of that withdrawal. Yeah, and it is very clear that the uh, former president was invited in his personal capacity, as you said, by uh, a, a family of uh, one of the service members who was killed uh, about, a, about two years ago during the withdrawal from Afghanistan. It the was three years ago. Three years ago. Three years Thank ago you. to Thank the you day on August 26th. Yes, three years ago. The question Bro, is... Why, why, she get so, why she get so agitated? You, you don't like correction? Do you not like correction, Danny Bash? Do you not like correction? Why are you getting so agitated, man? You see the look, bro, you see the look on her face? Look, look, just, look, just look how agitated she was. No, you need to get it right. These people deserve respect. So, yes, you need to get the exact year that these people passed away. You need to get the exact year when this war was. Like, yes, like, come on now. It already bad enough that Kamala and Biden didn't show no respect. And we had to have a vice, I mean, not a vice president. We had to have a former president show the respect that that was needed for these people that fought for this country. Come on now. Yeah, you, you got to get it right. You getting all, you getting all feisty for it. Oh, yeah, three years. You just start blinking extra fast. Like, come on, man. About two years ago, during the withdrawal from Afghanistan. It the was question, three years ago. Three years ago. Three years thank ago you. to thank the you day on August 26th. Yes, three years ago. Thank you, thank, you, thank you for correcting me. Thank you. Like, that, that, that gave very much attitude, but, uh, but okay. The question is about the federal law and Arlington's rules that prohibit partisan or political activities at national cemeteries. And um, the military uh, and also other members of other families who are buried right near there are upset about the campaign filming it and posting the video online. Do you believe that was appropriate? You know, I checked with the campaign on this question and uh, they have exchanges with the, the officials at Arlington Cemetery. They were approved to bring a camera there to document this historic and momentous day that should not be forgotten by any American. And to have a former president there and joining these Gold Star families, I know President Trump wanted to share that with others, especially given the fact that President Biden and Harris, I heard, were, were invited by some of these family members. They not only didn't come, they didn't even respond to that invitation. And, and now to have Kamala Harris put this statement out yesterday saying that she stands with these families, she stands with the military and with veterans, you only have to look at the response that came from the Gold Star families of these 13 service members of how offended they were by that statement, given she has not made any effort, not on that third anniversary or any other time, to call them directly to offer her condolences yeah. and even apologies
for their decisions that led to the loss of their loved ones. Right. Do you think that the campaign will release that uh, communication that you're talking about because the Army uh, is I saying they very already clearly, had, very clearly that, that, was, that they broke the rules uh, because it was clearly put out online, pictures, video, uh, meant as a part of his campaign? Bro, what are we talking about right now? Dana, what? Oh, my gosh, bro. What are like? Even journalists, people that went to college to do what she's doing, don't have common sense? What are we talking about? We're talking about people that lost their lives, and we're talking about breaking rules? We're talking about uh, uh, the president who didn't show no remorse, who didn't show no respect, who didn't even reach out to the families that lost their loved ones. And yet a former president did. And we're talking about him breaking rules. Kick her off CNN, bro. Kick, kick her off the platform, bro. Kick her off. This, there's no way a journalist is asking these questions. Like, there, there's no way. Was it appropriate? Do we just got to go back to the video of the Golden Star, the Gold Star families? Do we got to go back to the video and watch the video and hear what they had to say? Forget the rules. What are these families that lost their loved ones have to say? <sighs> Bro, this is crazy. I, I thought they already had. I was informed that uh, they had come to an agreement. They could bring a camera there. And as far as I know and the public statements I've seen from the Army is that the matter is closed. I think the matter is closed about the altercation alleged altercation, which you didn't see, but I'm not sure it's closed with the idea that uh, they seem to have broken oh. the rules and perhaps even federal law by putting out the campaign video. I, I want to ask you about... Here, here's, i just like to say one one last thing on this. Cause I Bro, if I drink, like, if I actually, like, drunk liquor, <laughs> this woman right here would make me take five, 15 shots of whiskey, bro. I kid you not. If I actually drunk liquor, I don't drink, but if I did, oh my gosh, bro, because it's like, yo, use your brain, fam. You're talking about breaking rules. And this man was showing respect to the families. And we're talking about breaking rules. Make it make sense. It don't make sense, bro. It don't make sense. I think it's important, and I've seen a lot of the, the headlines and the stories and, and the concerns that people are raising about this, but, but to me, as, as a soldier and as someone who has been deployed to different war zones mm -hmm. in the world, and I have friends who are buried there at Section 60, what is more outrageous to me is that there wasn't universal coverage of the momentous day of the third anniversary of the loss of these 13 Gold Star families and the outrage that they feel that they that their loved ones are not getting the kind of coverage and memory that their yeah. great sacrifice deserves. That that is what everyone should be outraged about. Well, yeah, we have covered the uh, horrible horrible events uh, three years ago, and uh, and have done so several times, uh, over and over again. So I appreciate you also talking about their memories because it is important. Before you go, uh, you said in an interview this week that you were interested in serving in a Trump administration, potentially as Secretary of State, maybe Secretary of Defense. Have you discussed that with Donald Trump directly? No, I haven't. You know, it's important for us right now to point out the difference between Kamala Harris and President Donald Trump, uh, what kind of president and commander in chief they would be. And really the leading um, concern that I have is about this, about the contrast between their positions and their records, and the fact that as we sit here today, President Biden and Kamala Harris have us embroiled in wars in three different regions of the world, have us closer to the brink of World War III and nuclear war now than ever before, according to the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. And this should be of concern, not just to Republicans and Democrats, it should be a concern to all Americans, because what's at question is our ability to have a future and to live in a free society where we can be peaceful and prosperous mm -hmm. uh, is as personal for me as it be, should be personal for, for all Americans because it is our future that's on the line here in this decision that we as voters have to make about who we want our commander in chief to be. Former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, thank you so much for being here this morning. I appreciate it. All right, now, <laughs> oh man, let's put Dana Bash to, let's just put her to shame real quick, okay? Because. Yo, I don't like the fact that we're talking about breaking rules when it's families who lost their loved ones 
doing what happened three years ago. Families lost their loved ones when we're talking about breaking rules. Now, I just want to hear, because I already watched this about four times already, okay? But I want to watch it for the fifth time with you guys. Now, this is the this is the Gold Star family, right? And this is their response. This is their response to, to, to how they feel, what they're feeling, because we're talking about breaking rules. Let, let's hear the response of the families who actually lost a loved one. All right, so let, let's, let's go ahead and do this. Vice President Harris. Vice President Harris. Vice President Harris. My name is Steve Nakui. I'm the father of Lance Corporal Kareem M. Nakui. My name is Jim McCollum. I am the Gold Star father of the United States Marine Corps Lance Corporal Riley McCollum. This is Mark Schmitz, Gold Star father of Marine Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz. My name is Darren Hoover, and I'm the Gold Star father of the United States Marine Corps Staff Sergeant Taylor Hoover. My daughter-in-law, Sergeant Nicole Leanne G., was killed in the Afghanistan exit at Abbey Gate. Our kids were murdered because of your administration. You were not at Dover for the dignified transfer. And no time have you reached out to me to offer your condolences, to offer thank you for Kareem's sacrifice and service. You have 13 families who have been waiting over three years to so much as get a phone call, to so much as hear our kids' names said aloud. You failed for three years and eight months to acknowledge our kids. Where were you and Joe Biden on August 26, 2024? Nowhere near Arlington Cemetery. Mm. You couldn't be bothered to be with us or even say our kids' names, just as you had done for the last three years. Vice President Harris, I ask you, why won't you return a call and explain to us how you call my daughter-in-law's death a success? President Trump has called. President Trump shows up. But President Trump takes the time to hear our loved one's stories. We invited him to be there. These are the only memories we get to make with our son. And it is you who is playing politics and trying to detract from our memories made that day. President Trump has been there for us. He's been a rock for us. He showed compassion for us and he showed he truly cares for the families that truly do know what the ultimate sacrifice really is. See, the difference, the, the true difference between Trump and Kamala is that Trump is actually for the people of America. That's the big difference. Kamala, she's ain't for, she ain't for the people, bro. She, she for, she for, no, wait, I take that back. She is for the people. But she's for the people of other countries. She's not for the American people. And that's the problem that we have right now. If this was if this was families coming from another country, she would probably show up, get remorse, all these different things. Because she want to bring them into America so they can vote for her. That's the problem right there. That's what she's trying to do. It's not about breaking rules. It's about showing the respect. It's about showing up. And that's what we're talking about here. Trump showed up. You can make the, You could try to say this was a political stunt. All different type of things. The thing is that Trump showed up. Trump is a busy man. This man been on how many podcasts since since um since getting closer to uh, the presidential election? Like how many podcasts? How many platforms has this man been on? This man is busy. This man literally stays on flights, going back and forth, back and forth to this state, to this state, to that state, to this state, and yet he still showed up, showed his respect, showed respect. And yet we're talking about him breaking rules, filming, bringing a camera on. What, like, come on, what does that do with anything? The man showed respect. He showed up. That's all that matters. Kamala didn't do that. Biden didn't do that. Biden is sitting on the beach right now, chilling. I forgot the man was even our president for a second. I haven't heard of him since, since he dropped out. <laughs> I forget he was the president. I, at this point, I feel like we don't have one. I feel like we just we just a country without a president. Now that, that, that's just how I feel right now. Cause I, I didn't even know. I forgot that this man was a president. That junk is crazy. But come on, man, Dana Bash, bro, and the anger that was on your face, even when you was talking, bro, like you just showed, like you, you just looked like you don't care. <laughs> you can see it all in your face. You had so much anger, so much. I don't know what it was, but your demeanor was very much off. Maybe I'm maybe I'm looking at it wrong, but that's how I looked at it, okay? Because maybe I'm tripping, but her demeanor was definitely off. You see an all in her face. 
Oh, thank you. We have covered them over like three years ago and we have continued to cover them. Like, please, please. Anyways, man, I'm going to go ahead and get off this, man. Shout out to uh, Tulsi Gabbard, man, for standing her ground, bro, and really just just showing up, you know, showing up and being there to to cancel the these false narratives against Trump, to cancel the fact that people like Dana Bash, they, they don't like Trump. You know what I'm saying? They don't like Trump, so they would say any and everything or find any and everything to put against him, to make other people hate him. But I'm sorry. You you just can't allow me. You can't make me hate a man who is for the actual people. Like you can't make me hate a man. It's not that he's for black people and not just like I don't I don't care if he's just for black people or just for white people. at the end of the day he's for the American people. That's all I care about. You know what I'm saying? And I'm part of the American people. I'm a citizen of America. I was born and raised in America, so I'm a part of that. But Dana Bash, they, they would try to get you to hate this man. They would find any and everything that he say, any little snippet, any little bitty thing that he say, they would throw it against him. Throw it against him. Oh, he was breaking the rules. Officials were pushed to the side. and Oh, come on, man. <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section below, man. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. It's been your boy, Japan. I love each and every one of y'all. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.